Hello and uh, welcome to Simon on the Sofa. Um, thanks for joining us. And uh, today I'm with a, a friend of six months now and uh, we was introduced um, by a friend of ours actually um, who said that we would have some things in common in relation to our uh, life experience. And um, yeah, we definitely have, uh, have shared some similar experiences and, uh, and now from our experience, you know, try to uh, make a difference uh, for other people uh, out in this world. So today I'm with, uh, this is uh, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Simon. Thanks for joining me. Well, thanks for inviting me to the sofa. So, um, yeah, you know, the, you know the gist of the sofa. So basically, uh, do you want to just uh, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, what you're up to at the moment? Yeah, um, my name's Charlie. Um, I'm an outreach worker at Wormwood Scrubs Community Chaplaincy, supporting prisoners on the release from prison. Um, I'm also an artist, and um, I'm currently working on a film about my experience of prison. Mm, excellent. And that's a, uh, that's a feature-length film, right? Yeah, that's a feature-length film. Excellent. And, uh, and uh, completely, uh, completely um, starring puppets, correct? Yeah, puppets and masks as well, so yeah. Super. And um, so basically, do you want to just uh, share a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, uh, we don't have to go in depth because I know it's a, a really quite a deeper uh, um, topic, but do you want to just give a description of what happened uh, in relation to this, uh, this story? Yeah, sure. Um, well, basically, I was, I was involved in a, in a demonstration that was then to shut down the British National Party headquarters in mm -hmm. Welling in South East London. Um, and it broke out into a riot and I was involved in the riot and I was put on Crime Monthly, uh, a television programme which appeals to some of Britain's most wanted criminals um, and was arrested and was um, spent two years waiting to be sentenced and then was sent to prison for 16 months. 16 months? Yeah. Okay, so, and they, they, they um, what was the charge? Rioting, yes? I was charged with rioting, yeah. Okay, and, um, and you know, and... And in what sense was it justified? Why did they have to keep you for two uh, two whole years waiting uh, waiting trial? Well, because of the, the the legal system, the way that it doesn't work, it's, that's why I was kept waiting for such a long period of time. Okay, and uh, and how, you know, I know, I, I mean, I know personally, but for the people listening, how do you how do you feel that that uh, went down in relation to you know you got 16 months really for you know not committing the crime that you were supposedly uh, judged for, correct? Yeah, well, I, what, what happened at the demonstration was that the police attacked the, the, the protesters and I was, with other people, was beaten up against the wall and I responded by sort of throwing missiles and stuff at police riot shields. So, so, and you was attacked prior to causing any form of attack yourself? Yeah, I was hit over the head and hit in the stomach. And then after being hit over the head and hit in the stomach, you then felt like, well, you just naturally retaliated, correct? Yeah, and with a mixture also of anger that the place that I was protesting about had led to the deaths of three young black boys. So there's a context around what happened within mm -hmm. that place. So I was angry about what happened. But I also will mention that just before I was sent to prison, I did some volunteer work at a holiday home for people with disabilities. And I met a police officer who uh, had, um, was injured in a riot. Somebody had got a concrete block and smashed it over her spine and left her paralysed. Mm. And um, I asked her, do you hate the people that have done this to you? And she replied, no, there's too much hate in the world using a special machine. So amazing. really moved at that sense of forgiveness, really. Yeah, that is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. If you can have, uh, if you can have forgiveness after that, then really, you know... Uh, anybody should be able to forgive, right? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a really empowering thing and I think that we don't often, we don't enough talk about forgiveness within our society. Yeah, totally. And, uh, and you, know, you know, so since obviously, you know, you having to endure that uh, 16 months, wasn't it? And yeah. What was, the, was that the total sentence in the end that you, you served? I served eight months. You served eight months yeah. Of, yeah, of the 16, so. Yeah. And then, but you, done, you did something quite amazing though, didn't you, when you uh, came out? So I don't know if you want to share a little bit of that which you told me um, which was um, I mean basically what what, Char what Charlie did was that when he came out he transformed um, his own experience and actually started to 
uh, turn that into a one-man show and tour it around a, a number of different uh, venues in theatres and so on in um, in and around London. Is that is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Um, do you want to just you know share? I know you've had some amazing uh, uh, sort of, well, not really testimonials, but you know reviews and and people really responded in not always positively, but that you got a massive response, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. I mean, uh, w what happened was that while I was in prison, I kept a scrapbook, which recorded my journey. And um, part of that was I received a letter of support from an Auschwitz survivor who was at the same demonstration, whose wife and child were gassed in Auschwitz. Mm. And that was a really powerful letter for me. And there was also artwork and poetry. And so I kept that with me. And then when um, having done a lot of work on myself, gone to 12 step meetings and really worked through a lot of various different things, I decided to do a one man play about my experience. Mm. And so I, um, I created a one man play using puppets. Amazing. Masks, physical fear to dance and silence to share my experience and to challenge people's perceptions of prisoners and prison. And it, yeah, I had lots of some amazing experiences of through using that creativity, really. Yeah, and, and also some people felt quite challenged, didn't they, you told me, in, in relation to the, the, the performance? Yeah, I mean, people were challenged. Some people found were offended by it. Other, some people were challenged by the use of silence. And I think that's really interesting that people <coughs> are uncomfortable with, with, with silence in a, in a theatre setting. Um, which, and, but I find that, I, I don't know, that, that that's really not any of my business that someone finds silence, that's their own business, but I did find the use of silence is quite a powerful thing to use within on a performance. Yeah, it is, I mean, I think silence just in, uh, in life is, uh, is quite powerful um, in relation to the way we communicate, you know. Um, a lot of the times uh, we're, we're bombarded with uh, so much noise and so much voices and opinions and you know we're just uh, this constant noise isn't there and yeah. I, I found myself uh, in my own uh, my own experiences you know just bringing silence into uh, into the uh, into my own world has been quite powerful um, you know so I mean one of the one of the things that um, you mentioned was that the the actual you know the performance was bringing up topics in relation to the prison system correct yeah and also how you were treated by prison guards. Yeah. Um, and you know, um, um, what were, you know, can you just sort of touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the issues that, one of the things that, I, or things that I worked through was the thing, the use of, of being stripped and how for me, when I was being stripped, it felt like I was being sexually abused. Mm. Um, and showing that in front of an, an audience for people to really understand that that, that using that, that stripping people is is if it's, it's abuse yeah and uh, and I think that that needs to be highlighted because that abuse then leads towards you feeling angry and feeling violent because it's a form of violence that's that's put on you so and in terms of the actual um, capturing what prison was about there was a poem which really captured the experience that was written by an American High Court judge in which are briefly some of the poem um, we want prisoners to have self-worth so we destroy their self-worth to be responsible so we take away responsibility to be kind so we subject them to cruelty to be loving so we subject them to hatred we want them to be independent own their own problems and quit being parasites so we make them totally dependent on us that was written by judge Janice Shaleen Supreme Court USA or it's a shortened version of it but um, it captures that really prison does the opposite to what makes a good human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, there's never any sort of uh, structure in place, is there, either in prison or even when you get out of prison in order to really empower or help um, individuals to, to, you know, to find that self-worth, right? To find that inner respect, inner love, inner compassion, and the beautiful word you used uh, just a second ago, you know, uh, forgiveness. Yeah. Because uh, forgiveness in itself is uh, is very very powerful. But like you said, if you feel that you've been abused and you've been stripped away of your your rights and um, you know your your, your integrity, uh, you know you don't really feel um, you don't really feel you have the power to forgive, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, so you know, so yeah, definitely, it, it sounds like uh, you know, it sounds like you've had a, a quite a. Uh, you know, I don't want to just say traumatic. Well, it is traumatic time, isn't it? it you can use that word, traumatic time. I mean, when you're being being treated uh, in these, you know, 
asylums as it were and the people don't necessarily have any compassion as well and a lot of the times don't want to rehabilitate really do they there's not actually the money or the even the uh the minds to want to rehabilitate do, do, would you agree with that yeah well I, well I think one of the, the, the one of the big issue is that actually I think that, that society needs to rehabilitate mm. in terms of the anger and bitterness because the the tabloid newspaper headlines and people's fixed views just generally in life are carrying a lot of hatred so that hatred then gets focused towards people that they can they can see as being easy targets or and the the, the circle kind of continues but ultimately people need to take responsibility for their happiness then they wouldn't be carrying such bitterness and resentment towards people that have done various different things yeah yeah that's a very uh, a very a very true point um so you know basically you've done something that a lot of people you know i hope a lot of people have done but a lot of people find it difficult to do and you've really creatively um transformed your experience into um you know a, an expression of um of all of the things we've been talking about really haven't you so do you want to just say you after the show you thought to yourself what you was going to make a, a um, make it like a well charlie was going to make a feature film <laughs> can you believe it a whole uh, 90 minutes uh, film and um, which i think is quite being a bit of a film uh, boff myself or liking film you know i think that's quite a uh, an amazing thing to uh, to try and do <laughs> so do you want to do you want to yeah, do you want to uh, do you want to just tell us a, a little bit about the film if you can yeah yeah well i think the the film came out because i had the, the stuff within on the play i sort of thought it would be a really good kind of like to collaborate mm. and so i've been making the puppets and um at crisis which runs a puppetry workshop on Saturdays I've been coming down between Saturdays between one and five um, and doing some filming down here and creating some of the puppets yeah. as well down here um, and it's a it's an amazing amazing place yeah um, which is which is where we are right now right now right exactly <laughs> where we are right I mean now. you know to everybody at crisis I mean I just like to say uh, from the sofa and from Charlie thank you yeah. you know it's been a real uh, pleasure to use this space and I mean this is where we're filming today it's, uh, a wonderful uh, wonderful space and again another pl platform where you can really help help people in crises right yeah. um, and it's not just for homeless but it's really for anybody that's in a in a little bit of um just a need for connection isn't it yeah yeah i mean th that's one of the great things about what about what crisis does is it brings together pe some people maybe that are homeless but also brings together the people that, that aren't homeless so there's a people sort of work together and um, you meet some amazing characters and amazing people mm. and stuff here and it's kind of just not about focusing on the fact that because anybody can end up being homeless it's yeah. I think one you know if you had just a death or or an or injury or something happens just one incident within your life and you can end up and any of us could end up on the streets totally totally and, um, yeah and also you know it's all always about the interpretation of crises as well isn't it people think oh look at the homeless they really you know they've got it bad but let's be honest there's a there's a hell of a lot of people in uh, in our society in our families that you know that are in crises right yeah, and yeah. you know this is a crisis of consciousness at the moment i mean if you think about it then fundamentally you know the love has been lost from so many of us you know love is lost from the society love is lost from you know relationships from you know the amount of abuse that you know i don't need to go into figures now but the amount of abuse child abuse uh, mental physical and uh, emotional abuse that people have to endure on a day-to-day day-to-day uh, -day basis you know yeah um so you know i really i'm personally really um you know really inspired by uh, by what you're doing um, and also some of the stories you told me from in um, your experience in jail, they were really quite fascinating, you know, with some of the people that sent you artwork and, you know, with the magazine that you was working on? Yeah, I used to, I edited an arts magazine for yeah. prisoners and ex-prisoners and um, the first theme was on the art of forgiveness, um, which was inspired by a talk that I'd heard of someone called Marion Partington, whose sister Lucy was killed by Fred and Rosemary West. She went into a prison and she shared her story and someone who was a burglar was so moved by what she said that he asked for other stuff he'd stolen to be returned and started to write poetry. And, um, Amazing. Who's the, who's the woman's name? Her name is Marion Partington. Marion Partington? Yeah. Okay. And if people are interested in the whole issue around forgiveness, there's a thing called the Forgiveness Project and they've got a website that you can link in and 
read some really, really incredible and amazing stories. Amazing. And do you, uh, do you, do you know the name of the web? What's the name of the website? I think the website's called The Forgiveness Project. Theforgivenessproject.com yeah, or it, .org? Or well, I'm sure I if you Google it, if right? If you Google in The Forgiveness Project, then you'll find these stories from around the world that are just really inspiring. Yeah, so, you know, really really do that. That sounds, uh, that sounds quite inspiring. So that's The Forgiveness Project. Um, Type that into the old, uh, you know, Google. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Google knows everything now. I've stopped even asking people anything anymore. I used to ask other people, you know, for advice, and now it's just ask Google. <laughs> you know, it's the Google's everything. But um, no, that sounds amazing. So, um, you know, I suppose you, I've told you a little bit about obviously my experience in relation to uh, being uh, um, in jail for um, for theft, and uh, which was an accumulation of, uh, you know, being caught. Um, in possession of uh, marijuana. Um, I mean, m my experience wasn't necessarily as, um, you know, uh, I don't think I necessarily had as a, 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 a I don't want to say dark of experience, but you know, I think uh, I think you endured a really, um, I don't know, maybe a, a, a wrongful wrongful arrest, you know, maybe, I don't know, you know, I, I'm sure different people have different opinions on, you know, and to justify it, but um, I think the key thing for me now, and, and you know, moving into my, uh, my later years and, and what I'm doing is that, you know, we, we, we don't need to be judged by our past, do we? You know, we really don't need to hold on to the past. And this whole forgiveness is that until we forgive ourselves, we really can't, you know, forgive another. Um, yeah, we, Nelson Mandela said it well, to not forgive is like drinking a glass of poison and waiting for your enemies to die. That's amazing. He said it's like drinking a, a, a glass of poison. And waiting to not forgive is like drinking a glass of poison and waiting for your enemies to die. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. And that's it in a nutshell, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's amazing. And I mean, you know, as we, um, <clears throat> you know, what do you, you know, what do you see, what do you see um, in relation to what's happened in the press recently with, uh, with this whole um, protesting and stuff? I mean, as, as most of the viewers know, I don't, I don't watch too much um, uh, news and uh, the newspapers. And I, I feel that a lot of the times newspapers are misleading and we only ever get told what, you know, what we're supposed to hear as opposed to what we should, you know, what's the truth. But I mean, um, you know, how do you feel about the, the protest in relation to the whole um, students being overcharged and, and, uh, and this whole rioting uh, drama? I think there's, I feel really, well, firstly, feel really angry and, and quite sad, I feel angry and sad about, uh, to know what those students now are facing and to f what they're gonna, the court cases, their, their, their lives will be that demonstration mm. for some of them. Some of them will end up going to prison, and for others, when they apply for jobs and things, that 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 will be on their record. And and for the f and they were the, the Liberal Democrats, as people, among the, most of the general public, have a sense of knowing that they actually lied about what they told to the students. So they to they told they got in on the back of a complete lie, mm. and they've just been lying ever since. And. I think that's angered people really and, and on those when you go on those demonstrations and when you're when you've been kettled in that sense of how how it feels to be kettled in and then like at that demonstration when they send police horses and things in and a full I don't I don't think as well people are really aware of what it feels like when a riot also a riot police officer all the armor and stuff that they wear it they their weight and how how strong they are and how powerful they are compared to what an average demonstrator is mm. and how terrifying it is to be I, I felt when i was at the protest against the bmp it was like someone was driving a car into the crowd mm. that's how powerful it is and people yeah. don't understand that but what they then see is they just see what they hear in the, in the newspapers which you know, interestingly enough, that one of the boys was beaten to within on a part of his life. He came close to dying. But mm. what did they concentrate on, Charles and Camilla? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which just says it all, really. And I think it's these things to me just highlight just how how extreme right wing our, our media and and to see those photographs of those young people, their pictures are put into all of the newspapers, including the Guardian, which to me really sad because it calls itself a liberal paper. Well. You know, when are they? If if it's a liberal paper, then maybe they could put a few of the police photographs on of the police that beat some of the demonstrators up mm. to balance things out. But we just don't have a balanced media, so it's very sad. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it, I hear what you're saying. I mean, you know, in relation to you know what you've shared. And I mean, you know, I mean, again, I I don't know the full story. I know there was a, how many people arrested in the end. 
how many students have been arrested? 180 from what I've heard so far. And that's, that's covering, I think, the three demonstrations. OK, so 180, but like... But that's a lot of people criminalised. That's a lot of people criminalised, totally. But also, it comes. it's so much deeper, isn't it, always? Because, you know, we talk of forgiveness and we talk of acceptance and we talk of, you know, loving each other and, and so on. But, you know, with, with the amount of actions that are coming, which are coming from that place of anger, so it's, it's quite a powerful, and I know you said to me earlier that... You know, you felt like going down there and the anger was almost, um, you know, making you want to do something. But then you realised that you was going to, again, transmute that in anger into something like the film and, and like creating awareness for, uh, for other people, which I think is uh, very admirable of you and, and I think definitely the right decision. Um, but, you know, this anger, you know, how do you see... Because anger is not love, right? Love, love, at the end of the day, you know, brings in the emotions of acceptance, um, you know, uh, compassion... Um, you know, allowing, letting go, and, and really, you know, because even, like you said, this, that story about the policeman um, in relation to, um, it's not always the police, is it? It's like, there seems to be this massive energy of anger that is controlling all of this stuff, whether it be the systems that are in place, the taxes, you know, um, university costs, you know, and so on and so forth, all coming from, stemming from money, right? Yeah, Would you yeah. agree? Yeah. But then, not every individual, even in that police force, is surely they have some, you know, they have some sanity, some 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 love within them. You know, they don't want to keep battering these people just for this 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 illusionary society based on money and fear, do they? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, but I think that one of the things is actually when one of the things that I I think works really well within stuff is restorative justice, and I don't see why restorative justice couldn't be used within after demonstrations. And what I is what is sorry to, yeah, yeah, well, what is restorative, restorative, restorative justice? justice is about it well not it's about the person who's the victim and the offender coming together so that the person who's been the offended or or the or the victim so they get a chance to express what in in person person to person what's happened so that the person has a sense of what they've done mm. and i think that within these demonstrations on both sides they don't get a sense that there's no sense of being able and there's never it's never ever been spoken about i don't think because i feel for me i would i would welcome the opportunity to meet in face to face with some of the police officers that attacked me that day and that i had thrown bricks to to at, at their riot shields to to to, ha to have that conversation mm. and so i think restorative justice for me because i think the courts take away our sense of actually being able to on both sides being able to just communicate and to talk and for us then to see our humanity really yeah but, yeah. You, but you are right that there are we we need to hear these these stories of forgiveness but we then we also we need to have this dialogue this conversation needs these conversations need to happen totally and because we're just divided up we're divided up on the demonstrations we're divided up in the courts we're divided up by what newspapers and things that we read so mm. I think if we can, if, if, if something is put in place where we can just communicate and just talk better, then I think it breaks down that fear and mistrust. Yeah. Um, which would work, which, well, I don't know, it's, it's something new, and I think there's something that we could do. But I guess coming back to the arts and creativity, I think that for me anyway, it's given me a sense of healing and, and a sense of being able to share various different things that, that have happened. And um, yeah, that's, that's. But that's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? I mean, but like you say, I mean, I suppose. You know, my big, uh, my big uh, thing is that bring it back to self, right? Yeah, so yeah, first yeah. of all, like me and you, we talk openly and we're sharing things and we're getting to know each other and that's amazing. And I mean, even just in this communication now, there's healing, right? Yeah. In, in relation to, you know, hopefully people can hear, you know, what we're saying and, you know, and, and the viewers that are, you know, watching, you know, hopefully you can take something from this. But I mean, it's not just about getting angry and protesting and, and, and pointing the finger and so on, because we are society. You know, we are we are creating this society by 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 being a part of it, taking part in it, by perpetuating it, and so on. So you know, everything you said, it's it's a thin line, isn't it, Charlie? In relation to yeah, we say forgiveness totally, acceptance totally, um, but then it's not about allowing the pain and the, the anger and all the, the hypocrisy to go on, is it? It's it's funny. It's a really, you know, it's quite mad. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just quite mad, really. What do you think? It's yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 not an easy kind of thing. I mean, there are issues around, for, for example, with forgiveness. That 
they're ongoing things that you have to keep working on every day yeah and, yeah. It, and it doesn't always have to be that it's the big huge things within unforgiveness but they're just the ongoing things that you have to keep working on but I think that um, but but if we are going to, if to have a, a more of a balanced healthy kind of a democracy then there needs to be more of these stories are, are heard I think for us to heal and to get better we need to hear these stories Definitely. so that we can also within our physical self I, d I genuinely think that those types of things like forgiveness and stuff like that is physically makes you feel better and mm. I think that resentment and bitterness can physically make you sick and yeah. it can actually kill you and it can eat away at you and so on, on uh, I don't know so in, in terms of things that creative things and I hope that you know if anyone is kind of listening to this that uh, it's maybe put it off or thought or oh, I can't do this or then and that you can do it and yeah. it actually you can do whether it's puppetry yeah. whether it's painting with anything creative I think is, is a beautiful thing and should be encouraged and should be actually seen as being seen as being more important as them than what it because it is it's the, it's the thing that actually is, is I don't know it's just one of the most beautiful things in the world is, is being able to use creativity yeah and being, and being creative beings totally and what a beautiful place to uh, to really you know wrap it up in, in almost I mean you know basically you know what you said there in relation to creativity is just uh yeah it's just you know let's not let's not um let's not be numb you know let's express you know let's share and and and, and really tell like you said beautiful I'm, I'm sort of repeating those great words there but just you know basically let, let, let your inner child play yeah I think sometimes yeah. what happens is that as adults we get really really serious yeah and totally like that, and that we forget to actually let's, <laughs> let's be kids yeah. again let's play and, exactly you, know, you meet characters and you meet someone and they could be about 70 but they've got that childlike spirit yes and you exactly. meet someone who's actually I don't know could be 16 but they're about 70 yeah totally and it's like the parents have knocked it right out of them they've had these rules and conditions and everything else and actually it should be that you should just be able to play and yeah be, and jump also, around a little bit and did, you know be odd be a bit naughty and yeah <laughs> like exactly those things are part of us yeah no for you sure know, wouldn't it be better if you had a pair that said well why don't you aren't, why aren't you breaking a few of the rules yeah <laughs> exactly all these but rules and regulations just create numbness don't they and dysfunction yeah. i mean we're not dysfunctional are we yeah, you know look at us play. you know we're just here just having fun yeah. so um Oh, thank you for it. Thank you anyway, you know. Thank you for... Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming <laughs> down. I mean, I, it's been a, a real pleasure. Yeah. And, uh, and basically, I hope we're going to do this... We're going to do this again because what I really love, I don't know if you'll be up for this, but it'd be possible to maybe interview the, uh, the cast of the um, film. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll get in contact with them and I might have to go through their agents and, oh, okay. and see whether they're free. Okay, yeah. But if yeah. they're free then, and their agents allow it and stuff. Yeah. Because I'm working with some of the puppets, are, they are, they've got their puppet agents, so I'd have to go through the puppet agents. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. If they're free, okay. then I'm sure they'd be wanting to promote the film. Okay, beautiful. Okay, well, keep me posted and uh, obviously I've got your number, so I'll, uh, I'll, keep you, I'll keep in touch, yeah? Yeah, and then if anyone wants to, on a Saturday between 1 and 5, there's the crisis puppetry workshop and come down on a Monday we have a performance puppet workshop as well so okay and yeah. I'll, I'll probably see you there anyway because I'm going to do a bit more of the old uh, the old performance you know yeah. all right <laughs> you know all right okay well there you have it um beautiful my favorite word on the sofa um and uh I hope uh, I hope you really enjoyed that conversation and can take something from it check out the links that I'll put on the uh, on the bottom and uh yeah as always uh, love yourself and uh, be true to who you really are. Okay? Thanks for listening. Thanks a lot.